Hey there YouTube, this is John Burns with John Burns Fine Art, where I teach you what I know about sculpture. So today I want to cover mold making once again. Hydrostone, mother mold with fiberglass. Let's get to it. So while I'm uh, working my magic with the silicone here, I just want to say thank you for watching my videos. It means a lot to me. Um, if you haven't subscribed, would you please subscribe and select all notifications? Don't forget to like the video and please check out the description uh, down below. It has my social media links where you can see more of my work. And uh, in the description below, you can see if there's any materials that might be relevant to you. Uh, if you do see anything that you're interested in, I encourage you to go ahead and make that purchase and uh, get started on your sculptures right away. So in this part of the process, we have the paneling nails all inserted where we've determined our parting line to be. And I take strips of oil-based clay. That's just a tube that I've rolled and then flattened out and trimmed with a straight edge. I put them on the one side of the nails. So the surface side that I'm gonna mold, I leave smooth side out, you know. The back side here, doesn't really matter what this side looks like at this point. But I just use a piece of clay there on top of the nail head and that keeps that secured. So I'll just work my way up here and then I will manipulate the clay to have it follow the contour of the form. This center section where the pipe is going into the sculpture, I have in another video called removing the armature pipe and I show how to do that there. But in the meantime, we are going to work around that area and after we have this all set up, we'll make the one mother mold half so it comes off on that side. Then we can take the clay and the nails off and make the second half pull off on this side. Okay. My hands there suggest how the mold is going to have to come off the form to come off because of some slight hooks in the arm right there. I will put some clay in there to help reduce that. And sometimes it's okay to leave gaps between the mother mold and the rubber if the rubber is thick enough to support itself. So as I put this clay shim or wall up against these nails, I can use a hard blunt object like the back of my fettling knife handle and kind of push the clay from the opposite side while I brace it with the handle. And then that way, it helps line up with my parting line a little better and it buries the nail and creates a little more rigid of a wall. And then I can use a little piece of clay to help kind of bury that further. And of course it leaves a little bit of smudge marks and uh, anomalies on the show surface side, which if you want to leave them, that's fine. That acts as registration. But if you're particular, you can go back and smooth that out, that's fine. And you'll see where your clay walls come together, you're also gonna have little areas to clean up anyway. Just smooth that out. So I'm working my way up here, and this can be where it gets a little tricky when you're working around curves. What I would like to add here is the note that when you create a little circle like that, make sure that the mold is gonna let that go. It would be nice, ideally, if that center section that you're walling up could be pulled straight out. So if you lean that wall inward towards the center, it's not going to do that. But you know, the beauty of this method is that you can manipulate the clay wall uh, as you see fit and then join it and you can cut it um, just how you need it. You need to cut a little extra to tuck it in there to fill up a hole. Uh, you can do that as well. To go beyond the fact, I create a condition for myself and dwell in it, and think from it, instead of thinking of it. For the great fallacy of the world is perpetual construction, deferred occupancy. Create and create in my mind's eye all kinds of lovely things I would like to realize, but I never occupy them. I do not penetrate the state and go right into it and give it cubic reality. But I know, and you know, and it's not difficult to understand why. The sense of touch is something we believe in more profoundly than we do in, say, the sense of sight, or the sense of hearing, or the sense of smell. So I tell you, flex, all the blood, that's the deluge. There was no other kind of blood. We are actually inundated 
with the facts of life. And these facts, we change them every day. Today, this is the cause of so and so. Tomorrow, that's not. So, it's another cause we found. And then the next day, another cause. But while we haven't found the next cause, we leave that to be the fact. And we worship the facts. So I tell you, all things are in the human imagination. Man is all imagination. And God is man. And exists in us and we in him. The eternal body of man is the imagination. And that is God himself. There is no other God. It's all your own wonderful human imagination. And the one thing the whole vast world aches for is the awakening of the imagination. And when it comes, it comes with the birth of the promised child, which sets the man free from the horrors of this world we call the world of nature. And I'm just finishing it, this up here, bringing this wall down. You can see how I kind of curb that clay and uh, pinch it. When I get it close to the silicone, I just kind of give it a little squeeze and that helps draw it in a little closer, closes off the gap. And when I'm done, I'm gonna take my uh, wooden tool, wooden knife, and go ahead and smooth that clay wall up to the form. In essence, what we're doing here is creating a shim so that as we build up the plaster and, and applying the bandages, we're creating the two halves and this is how they're going to be bolted together. Okay, so I'm just finishing the little pinching there and I've got my wood tool and I'm, it almost looks like I'm tracing along the edge, but what I'm doing is uh, forcing a little bit of that clay at the bottom up against the surface. And that is in essence sealing it so that when I apply plaster, I don't have a lot of bleed under. I mean, it's just more to clean up later, but at least this way I'm gonna have what I can expect to be a clean edge, a nice parting line there. And you can see, I didn't show this, but you can see how I drug a wall out there on the base. And of course the plaster is going to flood down. So I want to make sure that uh, it's not going to roll behind the sculpture. And that is part of the parting line, the bottom there. And I'm using just a regular petroleum jelly. Uh, it can be Vaseline or any brand. It doesn't matter as long as it's petroleum jelly. Um, I've even used some vegetable shortenings, things of that nature. Uh, but uh, Vaseline is the best. It doesn't, uh, lead through the plaster and it doesn't dry out and shrink uh, like vegetable oil does. So um, this part of the process, applying the Vaseline, helps the uh, plaster let go, per se, of the, the silicone and the clay. Um, if you use water-based clay, you can also apply the Vaseline to the, the water-based clay. Um, but you want to be really careful because when you create that mother mold and you have your two halves, it will want to fall off the sculpture on the other side while you're working. So just be mindful of that. If you don't use the Vaseline, um, sometimes it has a tendency to really grab and it will let go, but you'll see remnants of the, uh, the material on the plaster. So you'll see sometimes little remnants of the water-based clay or remnants of the uh, oil-based clay, things like that that are trapped in the plaster. Nothing wrong with it, but it's good practice to use the Vaseline so you don't forget on the second half. Uh, you're just in the habit of remembering to grease everything before you apply plaster. Okay, so I don't know if it's really obvious what I did here. Uh, this, I had to wait until it really started setting up. I let it sit for probably 10 minutes. Um, after I sifted it over the water, I let it sit for about 10 minutes. And it was super saturated. You saw that I took this clay off. So it was 
you know, basically this mold's going to be done. Uh, so this one here, I, it was just looking too messy for my taste. Uh, the surface quality. This is still a little choppy, but I'll be okay. And I tried to paint uh, one last layer on here and let it kind of run so I have something smooth to write on. I can put the name of this thing uh, right there and date it. But I used a brush and I used this bottle, just water, tap water, and I just kept, you know, spraying it and then running the brush. And that's how you can keep this moving because if you just uh, use your hand or use a brush and you're trying to apply this at, while it is like really starting to do that final kick where it's getting uh, hard and you can't apply it anymore, it'll have a real crumbly look. Well, I didn't have my spritzer bottle handy. <laughs> so this time I did. I mixed up another batch, applied it, and uh, when you spray it, you can keep it moving. And that does not affect the uh, hardness level of the plaster that I've seen. Just don't, if, if the plaster goes dead, meaning it's kind of, it's kicked and it's crumbly and you're, it no longer has any fluidness to it, like this here, this is no good. This, I mean, I'm playing with it, but it's so short at this point, there's no more plasticity. Uh, don't try to spray that with water and smooth it out. Just get another batch going and try again. So that's my tip. Water, brush, you can get a smoother surface. And I, I want to add one more tip. When your gloves and things like this are covered with plaster, don't rinse them in the sink. Just let them dry with the stuff on there or have a slop bucket. If you need to rinse your gloves off, a slop bucket just full of water so you can rub your hands off in it and get most of the plaster, I mean I'm talking 99% of the plaster off your gloves before you go over to the sink, it's much better because if you even take a little bit of plaster that is still liquid and dump it down your drain, if that seizes up in your pipe you're going to have a really expensive, you know, you're going to be paying somebody to fix your plumbing. So just let it dry and you can break it off and put it in the trash or have a slop bucket to rinse your hands in and over time that slot bucket will have the suspended particle plaster plaster particles and it will settle down to the bottom and you can skim off the water on the top and then just let that settlement at the bottom, that sediment uh, it will dry and you can dump it out into the trash so either way there's safe ways to do this but this is uh, starting to get really warm right now so it is starting to cure and we're just going to take a coffee break or something, okay? Or try to figure out what we're going to do next. All right, so I've got my mess cleaned up. And I want to show how to prep this for the next, the next part. But I want to point out that, you know, it's, it's very difficult to work vertically with a mother mold because the plaster naturally as a liquid wants to fall. So you're kind of in this weird place trying to keep it going up but uh, so I wanted to lay it down on its side but I can see by evidence uh, where some of this plaster is dripped over it's up against this clay shim that it was there was a gap there and then when I pushed it back I realized there was a space underneath the front and I what I deduced is that this is moving slightly just like that. So I can twist the sculpture this way a little bit. It's pivoting right here. And what that ends up doing is it's like um, kinking the sculpture. And that will ultimately cause your... Um, I've had this happen on a different mold. And I wasn't uh, aware at the time. Um, so you want to make sure that it's straight. Because even if you end up getting your two mother mold pieces together, what you've done is aligned the silicone jacket to this one and then you twisted it so it's out of shape. And then this side will match the new silicone position. Uh, so when you end up cutting it open, it never wants to lay right inside. And that's what happened to my other one and I have gaps in it and it causes leaks. So even though that seam line can be cleaned up, 
I can go through and clean up the inside of the mother mold where it leaks through. It's something that could, should be avoided. So I'll let you watch me clean this up before I go in there and shim up the second part. What I'm hoping to do here is create a circle around here. There's a slight black line, yeah. And I'm gonna take the clay and make a wall around here because in a, another video I wanna show how to patch up this pipe. It's a real nuisance when you're trying to make molds and you pull this out and you just have like a hole in the back of your sculpture that you have to go and fix up every time. So in a related video, I'm gonna show how to cut this open, clean up the back, and then reseal it with silicone and then you can put your third window or your uh, plaster mother mold on top of it which can eventually be incorporated into one of the other pieces or it can just be a loose piece you know but either way it'll just be less work and in theory hopefully all you'll have to do is clean up this thin line where you patch your work back up you won't have to go in here and plug it and regrind the center so that's good some people like to use uh, aluminum shims and then just do two sides and then pull the shims out but that leaves a gap I mean ultimately it leaves a gap if you're fine with that well more power to you but if you want to have an airtight fit this is how you do it you put your clay shim or you can use cards or pie pans or you know if you want to do the aluminum shims that's fine that's fine but the idea is that you remove it before you do the second side. So if you use aluminum shims, throw your plaster on and then pull the shims out and grease up your plaster because that's what I'm going to have to do. I'm going to have to take more Vaseline now and put Vaseline on here. And then once I have Vaseline on there, I can throw that plaster on there and then have the tightest airtight seam. And these gaps, these air bubbles, you just fill that up with Vaseline and make it smooth. You don't need to uh, get plaster in there. That'll just make it more difficult to pull it apart. So just smooth it over with Vaseline. And you don't need registration marks per se because there's enough, you know, anomalies in this that they'll lock together fine. It'll register fine just having the waves to follow along the figure. So I just want to say I'm going to go ahead and finish this because you already saw what the other side did. It's not that important, right? I'm going to drill some holes just to keep it clamped together so it doesn't open up on me. It may fall open because I uh, put a release on the uh, silicone. But the next step is to lay this down and get the black pipe, or in this case, the galvanized pipe, out of her back. And then I'll show how to patch this up, which will be in another video. But this will be the next window. Okay, so these are plaster bandages. I found this technique to be very useful. So before you lay down your uh, fiberglass bandages, use the plaster bandages, just lay them straight into the hydrostone to hydrate them, and then apply them. That helps prevent the, the running and the sagging of the hydrostone. So do that first, and then you create a nice first layer, and you can go back and lay your fiberglass bandages on top. So here, once I've determined I have a nice thickness, I use a, a Sharpie marker to pre-mark my holes, drill them, get the bolts in there to make sure that the mold stays together as I work on it. Last thing you want is for a mold to fall open while you're working on it. So bolt it together, get your edges cleaned up, and uh, I use a variety of tools to sure form there. I use a knife, a folding knife, just an old cheap Walmart knife that you uh, might find useful to help kind of uh, work that edge. Uh, be mindful 
that your hands are going to be in the way quite a bit while you're using these tools. So uh, have a first aid kit handy if you're a little reckless. Uh, this plaster has completely uh, set up, cured. It is at its hardness. So the sure form isn't cutting it. These, the blade that I'm using is old and I didn't have a, a new one handy. Uh, so I elected to go with a cutting wheel, a Dremel. So there's a variety of ways you can do this. The sure form, you can use a Dremel cutting wheel, uh, let it walk itself. Uh, that's just an extra tip there. Remark the line. That way you know exactly where to cut. Do you see all this extra dust coming through there? Have a good ventilating system. So with that first pass of the cutting wheel, I just used my knife and then kind of pried it until it popped. Make a second pass and uh, pop up what I can. Use the sure form to level it off. And the best bet is to really take the mold outside. There is quite a bit of dust that you'll find in the oddest places. Uh, you can set up a box fan uh, with a filter on it so that as it sucks the air through, it'll help trap that. Go ahead and turn it over, mark your line, and you can use a Dremel wheel to cut along your line, and then you can get a sure form and clean it up. I really find that marking lines ahead of time is kind of the same philosophy of measure twice, cut once. So once you get this all set up here, we're gonna get ready to flip it over and get a base cut out for it. So you'll see that uh, the board isn't quite a perfect fit, but we're using a ruler to measure across and find, uh, you know, the, uh, measurement that's going to fit the board that we have here. I trace around it, get it all scribbled out so I know exactly where to cut. I'm going to take it over to my bandsaw and get it cut out. Again, I'm using the uh, Sharpie pre-mark where I'm going to drill, take it off my Lazy Susan, put it over the styrofoam there. And then that way, um, I don't have to worry about that after I cut it out. I try to get all my markings done first and then lift things off and do all the cutting. Okay, check it out. <clears throat> so I've got carriage bolts here. Uh, they're just the bolts that have a square underneath the head there so that they go into place and they don't spin while you're uh, spinning them down. So anyway, when I put those in the board, you know, just give them a good whack with a hammer, you know, uh, hanging over the edge of the table or something to help put them, put them in there. Uh, so I know this is the back of my mold. I got it lined up here. Uh, sometimes it's not quite so easy to get the bolts to start through the, uh, the silicone. So I know where the holes are. I can see them, yeah? So I'm just going to phone would stop. I'm just going to do a quick little hole. And that'll open that up so that those bolts can go through a lot easier. You know, and uh, Vaseline, just go over the top and that'll help. That'll help get it to go through. And if it's still not going through easily, it's probably because you didn't drill your hole straight. Uh, so there we go. So I got my wing nuts. Where I'm here. If you want to put down washers, feel free. That'll keep you from screwing into this. And if uh, your plaster is a little softer, use washers because this will dig right down into it and chew it up, and then you'll lose your grab and you'll have to drill new holes. So, and if that happens, you can get really wide washers and put them down. 
And that'll kind of act as a, uh, lack of a better word, so like a splint. So this mold is pretty much done as far as construction. At this point, uh, we're just going to demold it. That's the next step. So I'll get my splitting tools and and the splitting tools are nothing more than let's see auto body panel removal tools. I can list those in the description. Uh, the carriage bolts, I will list those in the description. You're going to see a oodle of a lot, a lot of other things in the description uh, that are going to be useful uh, in helping you here. So I myself realize I need to get new uh, blades for my sure form. Those are getting pretty dull. They felt sharp. Not sharp enough, so I, I need to get some blades there. And, uh, anyway, I'll try to get this stuff listed in the description for you guys so you can find it. And uh, stick around, we're going to get it demolded. That's the next video. Happy days. Happy days. Something else I'd like to mention here before we get going is that uh, when this video goes live, I try to stick around and answer any questions that people might have if uh, you got any questions about this. And the way to know when these videos go live is to hit the subscribe button and turn the bell on so you get all notifications. I don't release uh, more than a video a week. Um, sometimes I you know, only do two or three videos a month. But uh, when it goes up, if you want to see what's up, you know, I'll be there and um, I'm willing to answer questions. So, uh, you know, for the first half hour or so, I may go a little longer. Um, yeah, subscribe, get some free uh, questions answered or get some questions answered for free. How about that? 